sapiens any day of the week. It, that's the truth, you know, it's a joke, but it's the truth. But I'd take almost any species, rattlesnakes included, over our fucking species, wouldn't you? I mean, you're a political being, you know. Um, Perignathus phallix. When I went to the shed to check for water damage after the last rains, I found a tiny gray mouse dead among the rubbish of an old carton. And lifting out the rags and jars, came on his mate, backed in a corner, tiny and alive. Beside her, ears barely visible flecks, tails nothing but tendrils of gray thread. Two nurslings, one curled asleep by her snout and the other awake at her nipple. The three together, no larger, I guess, than the height of my thumb. I took the box into the yard where there was more light and where the cats weren't lurking and lifted out the rest of the detritus. A shredded pillow, cans of varnish and spray paint, beneath which I found woven out of what must have been pieces of cotton, chewed cardboard, and small twigs, some sort of ramshackle nest. Now, with nowhere to hide, she scurried behind it, a pup still at her dugs, and looked up at me, into my eyes, the way one of my cats might, who'd been cornered or as might one of my own kind, pleading. Her gaze, wholly human, wholly intelligible. It's uncanny, isn't it, how much alike we all are? The next morning, when I went to the pump house, where I'd set the carton for safety, I was amazed to see the perfect filigreed globe into which she had rewoven her nest overnight. From a port at its top, her tiny snout and those two bright eyes peering anxiously up into my face. I just stood there. I could hardly believe how exquisite that nest was and how happy I was to see her. The crumbs of seed I had dropped in were gone, and I couldn't help but think how nice it would be to keep them there, safe from the hawks, feed them whatever they liked, but for only a moment, then took out my knife and sliced a small hole in the cardboard an inch or so from the bottom, and the next time I went back, they were gone. I was sorry to see the thing empty. Is that stupid of me? Perignathus phallix, the San Diego pocket mouse, according to my Audubon Guide to North American Mammals, which was the last week of March. The whole yard given over to mountain lilac and sage and alyssum, and out by the wood fence that stand of iris, too tattered, I'd thought, to survive all those hard rains, but which had, and under my feet, alive, but so tiny one hardly noticed, a hundred species of wildflower, saffron and white and pink and mauve and blood red.